today we are gonna be talking about SNA US 6K troubleshooting. This is the SNA US 6000. First is no EPS output. Scenario one, when the grid power is on, the EPS load works, but the but when there is a grid power outage issue, there is no EPS output. Step one, check the battery status. Check if the battery discharge is not allowed. If it reads the cutoff SOC on the BMS side. This is with lithium with communication. Um, on the web, um, monitoring, check if the battery communication works. Uh, this is where you check if the VMS, this is the VMS status. Step two. Um, uh, Scenario A, when the grid power is on, the EPS load work, but when there is a grid power out of the issue, there is no EPS output. This is lithium with and without communication. Lead acid battery. Second, check if the battery discharge is allowed and the battery discharge cutoff is rich. This is for the SOC, and on the bottom one is for the voltage, for lead acid uh, mode. Uh, troubleshooting, in case of no grid power, no PB discharge battery, uh, can choose to access the generator. We also can decrease the cutoff SOC. Scenario A, a grid, when the when grid power is on, the EPS load works, but when there is a power outage issue, there is no EPS out. Number three, check if there is a loose connection issue of the battery input. If both, Two sampling value are less than 38 volt, then please check if the battery input is a loss connection issue. Uh, what it's saying is you compare this BMS FW update and the VVAT inverter volt. Uh, it should be the same, almost the same. The only difference is uh no EPS output scenario A when the grid power is on the EPS load works but when there is a grid power outage issue there is no EPS output uh, same thing lithium with and without communication and lead acid battery uh troubleshooting. Measure the real battery voltage using multimeter. If the battery voltage of the BMS river update is less than is close to the real voltage, select according to the internal voltage. And if the battery voltage of VVET inverter is close to the real voltage, select according to the external voltage. Uh, you can find this under on the web in, in uh, web online monitoring, uh, which is which is on the bottom.
Let me double check that. Let me double check it. This is where you find it for the sampling, external or both or internal. And you can also find this uh, an online monitoring under data. Um, data. Data history. Uh, it's just really it's all the way to the end, or it's just this one. And next one no APS output. Scenario A, when the grid power is on, the EPS load works, but when there is a grid power outage issue, there is no EPS output. Uh, step two, check the bus to voltage reading. For SNA, the B bus to reading when the DC to DC circuit works, the equation should be like this. B bus 2 equals 7 times pivot inverter. What is this over here? Uh, when it is in charging mode, the B bus 2 will, high, will be higher a bit than the 7 times pivot inverter. Uh, just to make sure that DC, the DC works circuit works and works with the correct ratio. Uh, same no APS output. Uh, step three is check the on and off grid relay output for clicking sounds. If step A and step two are passed and there is no relay click, clicking sound, then on and off relay may have a problem. But it could also be the driver's circuit issue, which is control signal doesn't reach the relay or the relay failure issue. Regarding the driver's circuit issue, then the connection of the flat cable between the main board and the control board should be checked. Regarding the relay failure issue, could be an upper circuit, a short circuit issue, and the relay. It or the main board should be replaced. No EPS output, scenario B. No matter the grid power is on and or off, the EPS load doesn't work. Step one, check the status of the integrated EPS switch, which is on the left side of the inverter, which is this side. When the APS switch is off, both of the output relay, RY1 and the grid pass-through relay will be off status. Uh, scenario B, same thing. No matter the grid power is on and off, APS load does not work. Step two, check the APS status on the LCD display. 
Sometimes the EPS suite is on, but the LCD panel shows EPS disabled due to a lost connection issue with the wire EPS suite wire. Um, troubleshooting number one: cable in cable inside the inverter can be poorly connected. Check the cable of the switch to the interface board. Switch can be malfunctioned. Changing the switch is suggested for uh, diagnosing. You can uh, bypass the switch. Uh, this is where you see on the LCD, disable or enable. Step three, check the status of the integrated circuit. Uh, I believe there's two version of the 6K with or without breaker. Um, with the integrated circuit breaker is located at the EPS output circuit. And sometimes the bottom chip due to the overload or overcurrent protection. If the button trips, please, Press it down and check the con continuity between the two pins of the circuit breaker. Uh, step five. Uh, step four. Check the connection between the load consumption and the internal terminal. Sometimes there is an EPS output, the terminal of the LCD display, but the load consumption doesn't work due to a loss connection issue between the load consumption and internal terminals. Please make sure the continuity of the connection. Um, step, step five, check grid input voltage reading. Check the grid input voltage reading on the LCD. Display. Sometimes the real grid voltage measured by multimeter is not the same as the LCD display of the inverter side. There may be a grid voltage sampling issue. And when the grid voltage and EPS voltage reading is has a big difference in readings, the grid pass-through relays will be switched off. Um, this is how you check with uh, integrated breaker. Step six, follow the step of scenario A. If all step above doesn't work, then the inverter might have suffered from a surge damage. Please have a further inspection. If there is no any damage mark, please replace the control board and check again. You can contact me as a tech support if you have any problem with this. Uh, faulty battery anti reverse mouse fail. Uh, fault occurred when, let's say, when the reverse mouse has been turned on, but the there are voltage difference of before and behind the mouse, more than three volt for one seconds, and fault will occur. Fault remote, when the reverse mouse has been turned on, the voltage difference of before and behind the mouse, less than two volt test period for one second. Uh, this is a uh, board inside the inverter. Uh, step one, check the internal and external battery sampling voltage reading. The software engineer used BMS FW update states to upload the battery internal voltage sampling. And the VVET INV is the external battery voltage sampling. Normally both the internal and external, external voltage sampling value should be the same. 
If they are different, then there should be an issue in suffering. Please try to correct them. If you have a multimeter, please check the real value by measuring the battery voltage reading on the input terminal. Else, if you have, just check it online, please compare the two value to the VM to the battery BMS value too. Um, I believe um, only tech can only um, correct the sampling if both are not or almost the same. Step one, check the internal and external battery sampling voltage reading. Um, disable the abnormal sampling channel. Um, I'm not sure if everyone has access to this, but ask me as a tech support. Um, I should be able to uh, disable and enable it. Which is writer. Uh, let me check my other account. Installer. Yeah. If you if you have an installer account, uh, it's not gonna show. Uh, let me check my So if you have a distributor account, uh, you will able to access this uh, settings. Um, yeah, if you have an installer account, contact your distributor or contact me. Uh, the abnormal issue of the battery sampling voltage also may be related with the battery voltage high, battery voltage low, and battery open issue. Like I said, if you have an installer account, uh, contact your distributor uh, to and to um choose uh, for either external or external or internal. Um, number three, fault 2829 sig signal um, slash trigger signal loss in parallel system. This is how parallel communication works on the SNA. Actually, this is the Ethernet cable or the communication cable pinout. Uh, fault 28 occurs. The sub intern inverter fails to receive the sync signal for more than 300 seconds, 300 milliseconds. Fold 28 remotes after having received the sync signal and wait for five seconds. Fold 29 occurs after having a received sync switching state demand. The inverter doesn't receive the sync trigger signal in 40 milliseconds. Fold 29 removes. After having received the sync tri triggering signal and wait for five seconds. The related parts with these two issues, parallel communication cable, interface board, flat cable between the interface board and control board, and also control board. Step one, 
check the parallel cable communication cable. The SNA require a normal straight for pin network cable to work. Just ensure all the pins are well connected with the inverters. Step two, check the contact of the RJ45 socket. Sometimes the pin becomes inelastic and cause poor connection between RJ45 socket and the plug. Step three, check the third SNA inverter. If step one and step two are good, then it could be the internal connection issue. And the fault just show for the slave, slave unit. You need the third unit to help troubleshooting troubleshoot the issue. Check the parallel communication cable with every two units and find the abnormal one. The one having issue with either one or another two in abnormal is the abnormal one. Abnormal one. Uh, step four, check the interface board flat cable. You could either replace the interface board or the flat cable and check the fault will be removed. Step five, check the control board. If all step above are good, then you could replace the control board to check. Prompt. If it works after replacing the control board, please remember to overwrite the SN, the serial number for the inverter by using the serial port cable and PC talk. Wow. W local. Number four. Fold 08 can communication error in parallel system. Uh, fault 28 occurs. Calm data loss for more than 5 seconds. Fault 28 removes the correct and continuous calm data for 5 seconds. The, re the related parts with these two issues uh, are parallel communication cable, interface board, flat cable between interface board and control board, Uh, step one. Step one, check the parallel communication cable. Um, the SNL record a four pin network cable to work. Just ensure all the pins are well connected with the inverters. Step two, check the contact of the RJ45 socket. Sometimes the fin becomes inelastic and causes poor connection between the RJ45 socket and plug. Step three, check the deep switch con configuration. Two of the deep switches of the inverter should be on position and make sure all the inverter are set to parallel mode. The split phase parallel or three phase parallel. Step four with with the check with the third SNA inverter. If a step one and two are good, then it could be an internal connection issue. And you will need a third unit to help troubleshoot the issue. Check the parallel communication with every two units and find the abnormal one. The one having issue with either one or another two in two is the abnormal one. Step five, check the interface board and flat cable. You could replace the interface board or a flat cable and check the fault will be removed. Step six, Check the control board. If all the steps above are good, then you could replace the control board to check. Prompt. 
If it works after replacing the control board, please remember to overwrite the SN for the inverter by using a serial port cable and PC tool W lookout. Uh, number five, fault 13, UPS reverse current. Uh, fault occurs in parallel system, the reverse power more than 600 watts for 200 milliseconds or 800 watts for 20 milliseconds. Fault remote, restart the inverter. Um, step one, check the parallel communication cable. Um, just you just have to make sure um yeah yeah the SNA the normal straight four pin network cable to work just to ensure that all pin are well connected with the inverters. Check both invert stuff to check both inverters are set to parallel mode. One pace parallel or three pace parallel. If both two units are working as a master unit, then the base angle of the EPS output will be different and cause reverse current or surge protection. Sometimes bus voltage high issue may occur. Check two units, step three, check two units in parallel connection of the correct EPS line one, line two, and neutral connection. If there is a reverse connection of the EPS side of the two units, then the phase angle of the EPS output will be 180 degree different and cause the EPS reverse current protection. Number six, fault 20, EPS connection fault. Fault occurs for non-parallel system before going to the backup mode and the EPS RMS voltage is higher than the higher than 10 volt for one second every two seconds and average voltage is lower than three volts. Fault removes before going to backup mode. The EPS RMS voltage is lower than 10 volt for one second every two seconds and wait for five minutes. Step one, check if the parallel system without communication. If two inverters are in parallel connection and the parallel communication doesn't work properly because the parallel communication are not configured correctly. Please set both inverter to one piece parallel or three piece parallel. Number seven, fault zero zero, internal communication fault one. Fault zero zero occurs. Uh, the COM CPU fails to receive data from the control CPU for five seconds, or the data from the control CPU is incorrect. Fault zero zero removes. The COM CPU managed to receive the correct and continuous two seconds data from the control CPU. Step one, check if it happened only when the firmware update is done. If it worked normally before the firmware update and the after firmware update is done and the fault code occur, then it could be the issue of the DSP control firmware has been removed. Please just restart the inverter and update the inverter with the DSP control firmware again. The related parts with these two issues, the power supply on the main board, flat cable between the main board and the control board and the control board. Step two. Check if it could be removed after the hard reset to the inverter. If you did a hard reset and the fault code could be removed, then we could check if another mechanism were triggers, such as turning on the generator 
and the generator had a high frequency fluctuation, please just update the inverter with the newer firmer version. Uh, step three, have a further inspection. Neither step one nor step two works, then it could be the power supply issue or communication circuit issue. You need to have a further inspection. You could check the related parts mentioned above and replace and check again. From While checking the defective parts, you could also follow the step like this. Uh, control board to flat cable to main board. If it works after replacing the control board, please remember to overwrite the serial number for the inverter by using a serial port cable and a PC tool W local. Number eight, fault 17 internal communication fault two. Fault 17 occurs, the bus voltage is higher than 150 volt and the MPPT SPS is working, but the COM CPU fails to receive the COM data from the MPPT CPU or receive abnormal data for five seconds. Fault 17 removes. The COM CPU managed to receive the normal data for two seconds. Uh, the related parts with these two issue flat cable flat cable between the MPPT board and the control board. Uh, MPPT board and the control board. Uh, step one, check if it happened only when the firmware update is done. If it worked normally before the firmware update and after the MPPT firmware update is done, the fault could occur then it could be the issue of that the MPPT firmware has been erased from the chip. Please just restart the inverter and update the inverter with the MPPT firmware again. Step two, check if it could remove after a hard reset to the inverter. If you did a hard reset and the fault could be removed, then could be checked with another mechanism or trigger. Please just update the inverter with the newer firmware. Step three, have a further inspection. Neither step one or step two works, then it could be a power supply issue or a communication circuit issue. You need to have a further inspection. You could check the related parts mentioned above and replace and check again. From while checking the defective parts, you could follow the step like this flat cable, control board, and MPPT board. Again, if you are replacing the control board, you must overwrite the serial number using serial port cable and PC tool WLU call. Number nine. Fault 18, internal communication fault three. Fault 18 occurs. The control CPU fails to receive the COM data from the COM CPU or receive abnormal data for 500 milliseconds. Fault 18 removes. The control CPU managed to receive the normal data for five seconds. Related parts with this two issue are power supply on the main board, flat cable between the main board and the control board, and the control board. Step one, check if the Wi-Fi connection and LCD display work properly. If Wi-Fi connection and LCD display work normally, and there is a fault 18, then it could be a could be the problem of the communication circuit between the COM CPU and control CPU. Else, if Wi-Fi connection or LCD display 
and the spring bottom doesn't work properly, it could be the problem of the power supply on the main board. Step two, check if it could be removed after a hard reset to the inverter. If you did a hard reset and the fault could be removed, then we could check if other mechanism were trigger, trigger, trigger. Please just update the inverter with a new firmware version. Step three, have a further inspection. Neither step one nor step two works, then it could be the power supply issue or communication circuit issue. You need to have a further inspection. You could check the related parts mentioned above and replace and check again. Prompt. While checking the defective parts, you could follow the stuff like this. Control board, flat cable, and main board. If it works after replacing the control board, please remember to overwrite the serial number for the inverter by using a serial port cable and PC tool W local. Number 10, fault 19. Bus voltage high. Step two, check if it can be removed after a hard reset to the inverter. Fault 19 occurs. Bus one voltage is higher than 495 volts for 10 milliseconds. Or bus two voltage is higher than 465 volt for 40 milliseconds. Fault 19 removes. Bus one voltage is lower than 495 volts. And bus two voltage is lower than 465 volt for more than 20 milliseconds. The bus voltage high issue may be related with this. PV input voltage is too high. Current output is limited. Search current or reverse current issue is happening. Um, this is the diagram inside the battery, I mean the inverter. Um, step one, check PV input voltage. The max PV input voltage must be less than 480 voltage or it may cause the damage of the bus capacitor. Solution, never exceed the PV input limitation of the inverter, which is 480 voltage. Step two, check if the output current is limited. Both the DC and AC side could be limit the output current. Scenario one, when the inverter works battery charging mode and suddenly battery cuts off its output, then the charging car response disappear and flow back to the bus link, which may cause the bus voltage high issue. Solution, make sure the battery works properly and you could Limit the charge voltage and make sure it won't get charged over or overcharged. Scenario two, the battery has been fully charged and there is no EPS load consumption. The grid cell back is not allowed. Then there is no circuit for the PV power to consume and may cause the bus voltage high issue. Make sure there is a load consumption if possible. Okay, let's make sense. Scenario number three, the inverter works in hybrid mode, but grid cell is not allowed and there is not load compensation requirement or there is a relay open issue. The output current will be limited and may cause bus voltage 
course, bus voltage issue. Solution, make sure there's a load consumption if possible and check if there is a relay issue. Step three, check if surge current or reverse current issue happens. If there is a grid power fluctuation uh, issue or reverse current issue in the parallel system, which could cause the bus voltage high issue. Solution, if the grid power is not stable, power backup mode is suggested and make sure the parallel communication and the EPS output connection are correct. Number 11, warning nine, fan is stuck. Warning zero nine occurs after the fan of the cam board of MPPT board work. The inverter will check the feedback signal from the fan every 20 milliseconds. When the fan speed is higher than 10 percent, the inverter will show fan stuck when the feedback signal is higher voltage level for more than 500 milliseconds. Warning 09 removes. The feedback signal is low voltage level from one second. Fun control logic. When the charging or discharging power higher than 300 watts, both the left and the middle fan works. And when there is a PV power higher than 300 or load consumption higher than 500, 5,000 watts, the right fan works. Step one, warning zero nine fan stock. Step one, check if all the fan blade could be easily tangled. You could check if there is a fan issue with tangling the fan blades. Step two, check if the fan blades will affect by lead wires while turning on. Ensure that the fan blades are away from the lead wires and won't be affected. Step three, if check if there is an obvious damage mark on the interface board. Check if the MOSFET on the interface board are normal. Step four, Check the terminal and plug for more than plug for the fan control. Check if the flog are well connected with the terminals and you could swap the fan wires plugs to another fan terminals and tell and tell the problem of the control signal or the fan sig or the fans. Warning 13 over temperature slash fault 25 temperature over range. Warning 13 occurs. NTC temperature reading is higher than 87C. Warning 13 removes. Uh, NTC temperature, temperature reading is lower than 85C. Fault 25 occurs. Temperature reading of the NTC is higher than 92C or there is a NTC off band issue, which is negative 25C. Fold 25 remotes. Temperature reading of the NTC is lower than 85C. And NTC will well is well connected. Um, this is where you, if you look at the data history, this is what it means. You could refer to this history per data and figure out which NTC temperature has an abnormal issue.
step one, check the historical data and see if there is an NTC open issue. If the temperature is negative 25, there must be NTC open issue and check with the NTC kit as a loss connection issue and it may need a replacement. Step two, check if the temperature reading changes rapidly. If the temperature increase and decrease rapidly, then it is possible the fan air duct is blocking and the fan are unable to call down the IGBT or the MOSFET effectively. Please check if the air duct cover inside is well installed. Else, if the temperature reading changes irregularly, it could be a problem of the sampling circuit and the control board could be changed and check again. Um, I think that's the end of the webinar today, online training.